Welcome back. Amber and I were just talking about the uh, travails of the TSX Composite Index compared to the U.S. indices. Our next guest is not prepared to call a bottom on the TSX just yet to discuss where that market is going. We're joined now from the TSX Broadcast Center in Toronto by Diana Avigdor. She's VP, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital Management. Diana, it's, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. So walk us through your thinking on where the TSX Composite Index is going right now. You know, um, I don't set a target. We don't set targets like that at, at Barometer. We, uh, we circle through uh, relative strength. So um, talking about the TSX benchmarking, benchmarking it in, in the context of relative strength, um, it probably um, is weaker, relatively speaking, um, uh, to the U.S. Um, we have been saying uh, and we have moved our portfolios to a diversified um, uh, position of uh, uh, about 50% uh, globally um, and a lot of that in the U.S. as it seems to be the market that is uh, poised to best perform. Um, just wanted to mention about the Canadian currency. Um, you know, we are a triple A rated country, one of the few left um, with rates that are not really poised to go lower, like Amber said earlier. Um, you know, the housing market is holding up uh, rel relatively well, uh, no big blow ups as the global community has expected Canada to, to really have weaker economic numbers and that's not happening. So back to the theme of stock picking, um, this is a market of stock, it's a stock picker's market. We think the dividend uh, grower theme and the yield play theme still works in Canada, but you have to pick your sectors. The commodity sector is not working. You have energy, gold are not working, but energy infrastructure may work. Some of the financials are holding up really well. Um, CI, for example, Sun Life, Manulife, and we're watching for some of the banks uh, to perhaps stop the volatility and uh, maybe give us another opportunity. We've seen an interesting dynamic. The TSX is down six days in a row, but what has really led the declines have been those typical safe haven sectors, utilities, telecom, uh, you know, healthcare. And those right. have been the sectors that investors typically flock to when the market is in the red. So are you seeing opportunities in those specific yielding sectors? I do, actually. Um, um, then, and we've seen some buying come in on, on Friday, uh, picking away at some of these uh, yield plays because, you know, they, they just ran back into support levels. And they're paying a, a really decent over three, three and a half percent yield, some of them above four. Um, that you can actually lock in. You know, look, we're going from, we may be going from very low rates to low rates, maybe. Um, we're still watching for that. If the quantitative easing does taper um, around the September, December um, uh, time period, you know, if it goes from 85 billion to 60 billion, 65 billion, for all the right reasons, um, you know, fostering economic growth, Canada benefits from it. I don't think it takes away from the yield play as you can circle into higher and higher yields. Look what happened in the high yield market last week. So um, demographically speaking, I think people are still looking for those dividend growers um, and um, and then those stocks have outperformed over the last five years quite substantially. So a little check back is not, not it's okay. So you still think there's an, an opportunity in dividends because even if rates go higher, they're not going very much higher. You think the market's a little bit overdoing it with this thought, with this thought of higher rates coming? You know, we, you know, um, the short answer is, is sort of yes, uh, but we're, uh, history has shown that at this stage of the cycle, rates between two and five percent are generally beneficial to the stock market because they represent a reparation of an economy or growth in the economy. Um, so, um, you know, maybe, you know, looking at earnings, um, maybe margins get hurt a little bit, but uh, top line um, um, is better as sales increase and, and the consumer gets even better. Um, all it has to do is trickle into the economy. That hasn't been uh, shown yet. Um, but if the economy does better and employment does better, then it, it trickles into the economy in a wider way. So, um, you know, rates going up initially. And we might get finally the great rotation we've been speaking about for the last two, three months. But the great rotation has been coming from a money market, really, not from bonds. Last week we saw humongous bond outflows, equity outflows as well. But humongous $12 billion in bond outflows for the first time in a long time. Uh, where is that money going to go? 
Where is it going to go? Where is it? Equity markets. <laughs> equity markets. So you, you believe that, that it will uh, trickle back into equity markets, even though I we do. haven't seen that yet. Does that mean more volatility, Diana, at least while investors sort of figure this process That's out? Yeah, well, what we've had is not so much um, big, big weakness, really. What we've had is humongous volatility, and we've had huge volatility in the currency markets as well, because a lot of this is driven by currency markets. Um, you know, the ECB and the German court are meeting um, this week to talk about the OMT, um, whether um, uh, President Draghi has the mandate to, to, uh, for the OMT. You know, the euro is trading at 32 percent um, premium to the U.S. dollar. Why? Given the, um, uh, given the economy and the high unemployment there. Um, the correlation between the U.S. dollar and the equity market has ne is now above 85 uh, percent. In other words, they go in tandem. Um, they usually do, except in the last five, six years. And so if the euro does sell off a little bit, the U.S. dollar's strength seems to be consensus. Um, that will be supportive of equity markets. And from a Canadian perspective, we are neighbors to um, an economy that is repairing. We could benefit from that. Diana, it's always, uh, it's always a pleasure to get your thoughts. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. That was Diana Avigdor, VP Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital.